Okay, be honest with me for a minute. You have fantasized a time or two about having a Doberman who could, you know, really kick ass and take names along the way, haven't you? Okay, but how realistic is this really? I mean, well, you are starting off with the world's only breed of dog that is developed for the primary purpose of personal protection of humans from the very beginning. This is the only breed of dog for that purpose. So you got a good starting point, but now should you go out and get your dog trained in personal protection also? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today in this video. Oh, I know you thought about this a time or two. Well, first, I think it's important we talk about the differences between participating in bite sports and getting your dog protection trained. Those are two very different things, but oftentimes these terms are used interchangeably when really they are very different. So what is protection training? Well, this is usually the process of you finding a company to train your dog or to provide you with a fully trained protection dog that will protect you, your family, or your property. Now, these dogs are usually picked by these companies trained and then sold once they're fully trained. Almost, or very rarely, will these companies um, agree to take your personal dog that you bring to them and protection train that dog. That is very rare, but if you can find a company that'll do that, they'll also very often run your dog through these tests and these screening processes and very well may eliminate your dog if they don't think that your dog is a suitable fit for protection training. But the goal is protection training is to train the dog to uh, subdue an attacker, to bark, to keep them at bay. Um, they train them a long list of behaviors. They want the dog to operate somewhat autonomously, but also in a versatile number of situations, and also with some, a lot of control also from the owner as well, and verbal control is a big portion of that. So that is what protection training really usually encompasses. Okay, so what are bite sports? Well, the most popular bite sport is IGP, which is formerly known as IPO or Schutzhund, and it's exactly that, it's a sport. It's where a lot of owners get together, they do bring their own dogs, they get to know one each other, they have frequent meetings, it's a heavy time commitment from the owners, but a lot of Dover owners really love this. They train their dogs to compete, it involves some bites, stuff work as well, but it also involves other training and tracking and stuff like that. But uh, it's to get their dog titled and they get different levels of recognition the higher up they go in this sport. Now the focus of IGP isn't just on bite work, it actually has three main phases for this sport. Tracking, obedience, and protection. In the tracking stage, the dog is expected to track a subject or follow a scent from a subject uh, and recover certain articles left behind by that subject along the way and how well they do that is graded. And then there's obedience, that's this next phase, and that phase really tracks and gauges how well the dog responds to their owner, how quickly and accurately they follow the owner's commands. And then finally, there's a protection phase. And the protection phase is where a lot of the bite work happens. It's where they need to keep an aggressor at bay, they need to find a hidden person or a decoy, uh, they also need to subdue a fleeing decoy, and this is where the, the, the bite work actually happens right there. But the dog needs to pass all three of these phases in order to get titled in IGP. Now you can see why bite sports and protection training are often confused. Just remember bite sports are a sport. It's an adventure there for the experience. You bring your own dog to see what your dog is made of and to train your dog and try to get better at it and earn recognition through various titles along the way. Protection training is where you hire a company to either train your dog or to provide you with a fully trained dog uh, whose primary purpose is simply to be as versatile as possible and protect you as, in as many situations as possible. In today's video, we're talking about the pros and cons of protection training specifically. So first up, the pros of protection training your Doberman. Well, the first one and probably the primary one that most people go for is just simply peace of mind. If you know your dog has been fully trained and has proven themselves to be able to protect you, your family, or your property, it provides a lot of people with a real sense of security and peace of mind. Another pro is just simply building your bond with your dog a little bit tighter. Now it depends whether or not it's a protection training company where you're heavily involved in the training or you just get a completed dog, but either way, there's gonna be ongoing trainings you'll probably need to keep up with, which will help build your bond deeper and deeper with your dog. Another pro is that there's just more confidence in your Doberman's abilities if they're protection trained. You've seen the dog in action, you know what they're capable of doing, and so, and really that probably feeds more into that peace of mind as well, but you're just really confident in what your dog can do. There's no question there and no what if scenarios uh, that are going on in your mind. 
Next up, the drawbacks of getting your dog protection trained. Now, this is a lot of what makes it so controversial to do this. The first one is liability. And we'll talk more about this in a minute, but really, if your dog is protection trained and bites somebody, there's definitely some potential for increased liability there as well. The next one is that it can be very expensive. A fully trained protection dog can cost anywhere between thirty to $80,000, with the average cost being $50,000. Uh, sometimes you can find them for as low as ten dollars or $12,000, but if you go and get your own dog protection trained, this may certainly be cheaper, but as I mentioned before, it may be very hard to find a company willing to train your own dog. The next downside is there is a substantial time commitment involved as well, and this even goes if you buy a completed, already finished and trained protection dog. You're still going to have to go through some training yourself and learn how to handle that dog, and there will likely be some ongoing protection training your dog should go and get refreshers on as time goes by, probably for the life of the dog. Another downside is an unintended bite risk. Now this is argued heavily as to whether or not protection dogs are more likely to bite, say family members, or if they're less likely. But I think it's fair to say if your dog knows how to bite, is confident in biting, and has bitten many times before, even in these controlled settings, it may increase the chances that they may bite again. And, and hopefully it's not someone that they're not meant to bite. Um, also, there's a potential for unmet expectations. A lot of people buy these protection dogs, they throw all the money in the world at it, and they expect the dog to operate like a robot or completely on its own with no input from their owner, and that's simply not the case. Now let's talk real quick about the liability side of this, and because there are some significant things to consider. Now remember, I'm not a lawyer, I just train dogs and help people raise their Dobermans. But while researching this video, I did learn there are many examples of dogs that were protection trained or dogs that participated in bite sports, um, mauling and killing people, uh, sometimes kids, and their owners facing second degree murder charges. That does happen. I found some examples of that. I will put a link to one article in the description down below that has some of these examples, but it does appear that these owners do face um, some increased liability if their dog does uh, do something like this. So yes, it does appear that if you train your dog to bite another human being, that could be evidence against you in court if the dog does go out and bite someone they shouldn't. And this can even be the case if you only participate in bite sports and don't exactly have your dog officially protection trained. What about me personally? Would I get my dog protection trained? Well, I wouldn't personally know because I mean, well, first of all, it's already a Doberman Pinscher. They already have those instincts to protect their family as it is. And a lot of people argue, well, why not develop those instincts? I totally agree with that. However, for a lot of the downsides we discussed, the liability issue is a big one. You're leaving potentially the choice of deadly force uh, and when to employ that deadly force to a dog in a lot of ways. And I think there are a lot better ways personally for me to protect me and my family. I will rely on the Doberman's instincts alone to slow down or delay an attacker. And I think that is actually a pretty solid bet from what I've seen from the Doberman breed in general. So for me personally, it's just not for me. Um, but again, that's just my opinion. What about bite sports? Would I get involved in bite sports with my dog? Well, I would certainly be a lot more likely to get involved with that. It just seems like a cool sport. Like these people go and they, they bring their dogs, they see what their dogs are made of, they try to earn higher and higher, better, better titles. I think it seems like a really cool event. Um, you know, the liability thing still does concern me a little bit. And if I wasn't a dad and I had free time and I was looking for a new sport to get involved in, I may certainly consider this, but where I am right now, it's not something that I would consider for myself personally, but I can certainly see how a lot of people are really into these bite sports and where the fun aspect of that really comes from. So what would I personally do if I wanted to make sure my Doberman would step up and protect my family if it ever came down to it and I wasn't interested in bite sports or protection training? Well, for me personally, I'd focus on two things. Number one, I'd focus on increased socialization. You're already starting out with a Doberman, the world's best personal protector, and the only breed of dog ever created for that sole purpose. So you got a great starting point. If you just help your dog read what situations are normal and what are potentially dangerous or scary situations, you can help them be a much better protector for your family. The second thing I would do is I'd focus on building confidence in my dog. The more confident my dog is, the more likely the dog is to step up and use their natural instincts, which is to protect the family. So regardless of whether or not you decide to get your dog protection trained or you wanna do bite sports or nothing at all, Definitely at least make sure your dog gets some exercise. It's incredibly good for Dobermans. It keeps them happy and healthy in your life so much easier. Trust me, it'll be way more manageable if your dog is exercised. A great way to do that is get some great activity ideas. You can do that by going to dobermanplanet.com slash activity ideas. And there you'll find just a huge long list of a ton of great activity ideas that Doberman owners use all the time to exercise their dogs and keep them happy, fit, confident, and really build their bond together. 
Oh, and before you start the exercise, make sure you slap on one of these cool Phi smart collars. These are cool little gadgets, pretty fancy. They'll track the uh, exercise steps and miles traveled for your dog and give your dog credit. Hey, you want credit with your Fitbit, make sure you track your dog and give your dog credit uh, with one of these really cool fancy high-tech things. Uh, there'll be a link in the description down below for these Phi smart collars that you can check out. Just look for the little blue arrow in the description box underneath this video. Please take a minute to hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell icon next to it to make sure you're notified of our future video releases. And before you go, definitely check out some of the other videos here on our channel on Doberman Planet. We have over 150 videos now of all aspects about the Doberman breed. You'll learn some really cool things about this breed by just perusing through our uh, channel here and checking out some of our videos. So go take a look at those videos. And of course, I'll see you next time.